I've bought every single Sims 4 pack, all of them, which means, well, I haven't spent over a thousand dollars because I got most of them on sale. But I think I'm in a unique position because I'm not in the EA Game Changer Network, which means I don't get any of the packs for free. I've had to buy all of them myself. And I think it puts me in a great position to say whether or not I think it was worth getting them all. And if I could go back, which packs would I not get? And which packs would I more confidently get? If I could just say there's only one pack that I genuinely think was worth it, it would most definitely be Seasons. If you were to have asked me if Seasons was worth it back when The Sims 4 actually cost money, I would have said no. But now the base game is free. It's almost like The Sims 4 base game is like a limited demo, whereas The Seasons pack is like the full game. So because the base game is free now, I genuinely think Seasons is worth it. 50% off on sale only. And that's because it just makes the game feel whole because it gives you a sense of time. The latest Sims 4 base game 2.0 pack is Growing Together. People are saying Growing Together is the new base game, which in many ways I agree because it's basically a collection of base game features from The Sims 2 and The Sims 3. But will I say it's worth it? I think if you can afford all of the packs and you're very rich, yes. But if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And the reason why is just because it really doesn't come with any gameplay. It comes with a lot of like text boxes, badges, UI changes, but it doesn't actually come with gameplay itself really. It's supposed to come with this social compatibility system where Sims now have chemistry with each other or they don't have chemistry. And on paper, it's a really, really great idea. But the way that it's been implemented just feels a little bit annoying because the way The Sims 4 is set up, like how on earth are you supposed to know if your Sim gels with another Sim or not? Do I have to ask them what they're like? likes and dislikes are and then I have to double check them next to my likes and dislikes to see if we're compatible. It's just a little bit of a nightmare when you just want to casually make your sims make new friends. I feel like most simmers aren't looking for that extremely in-depth experience for relationships and even if you are in for that I just think the way that it's been implemented wasn't the best. Another popular expansion pack is high school years. This one is like really popular. Dare I say high school years is the worst expansion pack ever. That is a very bold thing of me to say. <laughs> Maybe something that will get me cancelled again. I just feel like High School Years is one of the worst implemented Sims 4 packs ever. Not for the world because the world is nice and to be fair a lot of the gameplay elements in High School Years like they're really really good ideas on paper. It's just the way that they were implemented is so bad. You genuinely have less gameplay options if you go to school with high school years than if you just force your sim to go as a rabbit hole experience and that genuinely boggles my mind. The fact that going to high school literally just doesn't come with any new gameplay is just mind boggling to me and like the careers and clubs in the pack it was just implemented so badly I can't believe EA did it. Do I regret buying high school years? Absolutely. Obviously there are literally so many sims for expansion packs it is ridiculous. In terms of ones that I do regret buying just to give you a long list. Horse Ranch I regret buying for being shallow. Snowy Escape I regret buying for being shallow. Eco Lifestyle I regret buying for being shallow. Island Living for being shallow. Cats and Dogs I regret buying for being shallow. Get Together I regret this pack not because it's shallow just because I rarely ever use a gameplay features in it. Cottage Living however much I really really love this pack it's one of my favorite packs but you might be surprised to hear me say I regret buying it even though it's one of my favorites and that's just because I feel like simple living is not integrated very well in The Sims 4 in general which is the whole theme of cottage living and I just really think if you like that kind of gameplay like you just need to buy Stardew Valley that's all you really need you don't need a Sims pack. Get Famous I don't regret buying it but it's definitely a game pack not an expansion pack and I remember I bought that one at full price and I do regret it. I I wish I got it on 50% off sale because it is a game pack in my opinion. In terms of ones that I don't regret buying, City Living is genuinely my favorite pack for The Sims 4. That combined with like Seasons
seasons together, I honestly think is so fun. I think if you do like apartments in the game, you genuinely just won't regret this pack. If you're the kind of player who just likes to play with young adults and no other life stages and you don't like to play with families, I definitely think City Living is good. Discover University, I also think is okay. I don't regret buying it at all. I do think the way the pack was implemented is a little bit bad, but if you turn aging off and literally just do like one module at a time. As long as you're happy to be in university for a very long time, I actually think it's really good. And the final one I really don't regret buying is Get to Work because it literally just fills up your Sims day. Instead of going to a rabbit hole job, they actually go to a real job. And that's why I really like it. In terms of game packs, obviously I regret buying my wedding stories. Obviously I regret buying Journey to Batu. I think those ones don't need an explanation. In terms of the occult packs, werewolves, vampires, and realm of magic, I genuinely think werewolves is the best occult pack, but I do regret getting all of them. And I know that's a bit controversial. I'm like a massive occult player. One of my favorite packs for The Sims 3 was Supernatural. I just don't really think any of them are worth it as a game pack. I think the gameplay can be fun, but it's not very rewarding or challenging. They're kind of like fun packs to mess around with if you're bored and try out all the magic powers, but it doesn't really come with like a proper sense of progression. And there's no real incentive to play with them in the long term. It's just something fun to mess around with, but I think you'll get bored of it after an hour. And that's why I'd say like, you know, buying a game pack for a one hour's gameplay is not worth it. Strangeville, I would say is also not worth it. And I regret buying it because it literally just comes with like one or two hours gameplay and considering the price point that's absolutely horrendous. Outdoor Retreat literally comes with basically no gameplay so that one definitely regret buying. Spa Day I regret buying again because it doesn't come with a game pack's worth of content and the spa treatments and the spa careers themselves were just not implemented very well. Dream Home Decorator this is one of my least favorite Sims 4 game packs for coming with the most horrific career ever. It's an extremely buggy Korea and it was implemented lazily. Korea aside, I actually really like the build stuff that came with this pack. Seeming these days, I like building more than anything else in The Sims 4 because gameplay is broken. I would say I don't regret buying Dream Home Decorator just because I really love the build stuff. Parenthood, this pack, honestly, I just, I think it's so overhyped, but I definitely don't regret buying it. And that's because firstly, I think a lot of the build stuff for this pack is great and I use it all the time. And secondly, I think it makes family gameplay a lot better. And I do think family gameplay is fun. I know Parenthood gets compared to high school years and growing together a lot, but out of all three of them, I would probably say I play with Parenthood the most. And ironically, Parenthood's a game pack and the other two are expansion packs. I just think Parenthood is a really great pack for family gameplay. Jungle Adventure. I don't regret this pack either and that's because I think it's really fun. It comes nowhere near close to The Sims 3 World Adventure but no Sims 4 pack ever will come close to any Sims 3 pack so to Sims 4 standards which are pretty low I would say that Jungle Adventure is high on the low scale and that's because I do really enjoy going into the different tombs and things and it actually has a little bit of logic to it and a little bit of adventure to it and it actually feels like a proper video game. It doesn't just feel like you're staring at an animation. It actually feels like you're doing something and you're getting involved and that's why I really like it. Dying Out, I don't regret this one and I'm really happy I bought the pack. Although it's extremely buggy and glitchy and the only way that I enjoy this pack is with Carl's Dying Out Reloaded mod. Without this mod, I would not enjoy Dying Out at all and I would 100% regret buying it. But simply because that mod exists and it's basically fix the pack. I really love Dying Out now. In terms of stuff packs, honestly, I regret all of them because absolutely none of them come with engaging gameplay that's substantial. You could honestly get through the gameplay of any stuff pack within about five minutes. The only one I really don't regret at all and I'm really happy that I bought is Paranormal Stuff and that's because I think the career that came in the pack is actually really fun and I think the Haunted House gameplay is really fun 
fun and I think the build stuff is great. The only one other stuff pack I don't regret buying too is Tiny Living. And that's because, as I said, The Sims 4 is basically an aesthetic build simulator now. It's not a game anymore. And as a build simulator, I really enjoy the restrictions of building in a tiny home. Now, obviously you can just build a tiny home without the pack, but I just like having the thing at the top left corner of the screen saying this is a tiny home. It does make a big difference to me and I like working within restrictions. It actually adds some challenge to build mode because build mode inherently doesn't really have much challenge in the game and I just think it takes it to a whole new level. In terms of Sims 4 kits, this is gonna be like ridiculously controversial. <laughs> I don't regret any of the kits. Okay, I regret all of the cast kits, every single cast kit because I never use cast in The Sims 4. I don't really care. But all of the build kits, I genuinely love them all. The only one singular build kit I do regret is the cottage kitchen kit or country kitchen kit, whatever it was called. This kit comes with such a tiny amount of stuff and it's basically the same vibe as cottage living. So I don't really think it's worth it. Other than that kit and the cast kits, I don't regret any other Sims 4 kits. You might be thinking, Satch, do you not regret buying Buster Dust? I actually didn't buy Buster Dust. That's the one thing I don't have. <laughs> that one is so horrific. I was like, I really don't want this in my game, so I'm not buying it. But out of everything else, I think they're okay for the kits. Now, I've bought a lot of Sims 4 packs that I say I don't regret buying. And it is unfortunate that The Sims 4 is a bit of a cash grabby expensive game, but I just wanted to give you my opinions on what I do and don't regret. On the contrary, if you just want to know which Sims 4 packs you should get if money is absolutely no object at all, then feel free to check this video out. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.